Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and I'm actually going to answer the question today, what's the worst possible food you can eat? Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to import data into SQL Server and do some work with that, with that uh, data that you got here. So I've gone down here to data.gov, and I found um, it's got a little XML file of the raw food data from my pyramid food raw data and it actually contains information about specifically about food and I can download this uh, XML file it is an extensible markup language file um, I can download that file and I've already done that so I can go ahead and move this out of the way and what I'm going to do with that file now is I'm going to open it up with Excel so I'm going to bring up Microsoft Excel here and I'm going to I'm going to open that XML file now opening an XML file in Excel is not particularly difficult so I go file open and um, if you, um, I know that I've downloaded this, I'm going to go into the directory where I've got it, 4709, and the file that I'm going to open is food display table, okay, and it's an XML file, and I've actually got it here set so that I can open up all the files, and it will show me XML files. And I'm going to open it as an XML table, and I don't really care that there's not a schema particularly for it, and if you'll notice, I now have, um, I can kind of crunch this in here a little bit, I now have all these different types of foods with raw data about the content of these individual foods. So for example, if I'm looking at sour cream dip, which is food code 1, 2, 3, 3 5, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 um, and it's got the portion amount, it's one cup, and over here I can look and see that I've got 105.64 I think that's grams of solid fats and I've got added sugars no alcohol 133 calories and some saturated fats well I've got this in Excel so I can actually do a lot of work inside of Excel but what I really want to do is I want to import this into um, SQL Server so what I would do here is I would actually save this file as an Excel workbook, it's very easy to import that, and I have it already here saved as food.xlxsx. So it's actually saved as an Excel file, so I can close this, and I've got it there. Now, over here in SQL Server, I now have, um, I've got a database that I've made called Food Database, and I'm going to go ahead and import this. So if I go over here and I right click and go to Tasks, I can import the data. And that will bring up a little wizard on importing the data here. Now, I've got a number of choices of data sources that I can use, but I'm going to use Microsoft Excel, and I have to find the file, which is right there, food. Um, so that's an Excel file. Um, the first row does have the column names. I keep that checked. And uh, I'm going to export it to my SQL Server, which is this one that I'm in right now, into the food database. And um, I'm going to go from one more tables review. I'm not going to do it by specifically writing a query. So I'm going to stick through with the wizard. There's only data in sheet one. And uh, the truth of the matter is that I don't want to put this in a destination called sheet one. I'll put it in the destination called raw food data. That's in the name of the table I'd like to put this data in. And it's coming in from a spreadsheet. I also want to, to do some editing of the mappings. If I look at the mappings, this is the first row, and but what I'll notice is that um, in here I've got a lot of things that are actually coming in as varicares, and I really want them as numbers because I want to be able to query on them. So I can convert them all to floats. Oops, float tab. Oops, I got to just do it this way. I'll just click float. Okay, I'm going to scroll down so I can get them all. Um, so these things that were numbers in the spreadsheet, and if you go back and look at the spreadsheet, you'll see that they're numeric. It doesn't necessarily always pick up that they're really numeric. Um, you have to specifically define the fields within Excel as being numeric fields, and um, it didn't pick that up. So now they'll all come in as floats, and it will do a conversion. Um, now the portion display itself was a varicare, but the portion amount was a float. So I can make that an, that a float. Display name was a varicare, and the food code was um, actually the food code was an integer. So I can bring that in as an integer. Or actually, what I'm doing is I want to keep that one as an as an varicare. Okay, and it doesn't need to be 255. It can be 
I mean, it doesn't need to be max. It'll be 255. Okay, so now I've got all those. I've done some editing of the mappings. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Jump to the next one. Now, there's a few things. Um, this is going to say, oh, you know what? Found one unknown column type. You're only allowed to save the package. That was this one here. So I can go back and re-edit that mapping. And remember that mapping was a float. So let's keep that one the way it was. Okay, now I'm going to go next and see. So I'm looking at the error messages it's giving me. Now it did give me a few of these, see these little yellow things here, just telling me that there's some issues with that. That there's a potential for some errors there in the conversion of the numbers into floats. I don't want it to stop if it runs into an error. I want it to ignore the errors and just continue on. I know that those errors will actually, will, will actually allow you to continue on. So now I hit next. Okay, I'm going to run this immediately. And voila, it's going to run. And as you go through, you can see that it imported a bunch of rows. So I can close this, and if I look at my tables, um, I'm going to do a refresh here, and I have food, raw food data. So if I were to do a select top 1,000 rows, I can see okay, there's my top 1,000 rows, and like rum and coke, portion default, portion amount. Okay, that doesn't really tell me which of the ones I think are the, are the worst healthy. So I've got my own criteria for this. Now, if you look here, this is just a simple select statement, which is um, got the display name. I'm going to get rid of a lot of this stuff that I don't want, um, I don't need. Um, okay, because I'm really looking at, I'm going to get rid of all those rows, and I can get rid of meat, soy, dry beans, oils. I don't really want those rows. Now, I'm going to add a where clause into here. Where? Now, here's my criteria that I'm going to use for bad. I'm going to use the criteria added. This is These are two rows that I've imported. Added sugars are greater than 50. And my other one will be saturated fats. And you can have a good time guessing here what are going to be the really bad foods are greater than 10. Now, that's just a specific criteria that I came up with those. I can now run the query. And here I have those guys, there's my added sugars um, and my saturated fats. I got milk cho chocolate bar, milk chocolate bar with almonds, coconut candy, Snickers candy, Butterfinger, ice cream sandwiches, soft serve ice cream, and ice cream bars. Those are the ones that have over 50 of added sugars and 10 saturated fats. Now, of course, that necessarily is not necessarily the, the perfect criteria for what's considered to be an unhealthy food, but what I've really demonstrated here is I've been able to get a piece of uh, a, a actual database off the internet, bring it in, put it into Excel, put it into SQL, bring it in and run a query on it. And I did all that in less than 10 minutes. So in 10 minutes I could actually, I was able to, get, to do the analysis of telling you what were those really bad foods that you could potentially eat. Uh, have fun. I'm going to go off and have myself a Snickers with my lunch now that I've actually determined that it's a terrible food to eat. Have a good time programming. Thanks. Bye.